the dust is still settling following another successful staging of the Jamaica International Cycling Classic, which saw Team Medellin out of Colombia taking the island's western side by storm and claiming top honors at the prestigious three-day road race event. Lennox Aldred has the details. Despite finishing 15th overall on stage three, Wilmar Paredes Zapata from Team Medellin was crowned the overall general classification winner of the Jamaica International Cycling Classic following the three-day action in Montego Bay recently. Paredes Zapata secured the title after winning Friday's opening Rose Hall Loop and then placed eighth in Saturday's Discovery Bay and back run to finish with an overall time of 6 hours 52.40 to beat out teammate Walter Vargas who totaled 6 hours 54.39. American Gabriel Mendez from Team WBHB secured the overall third place spot after also clocking 6 hours 54.39. O'Shane Williams from Cornell Cycling Club was the best placed Jamaican after his 6 hours 56.11 was good enough for 10th place overall. In the meantime, the Colombians dominated all three days of the event, Christian Tamayo winning the 70 mile Discovery Bay and back leg as well as Sunday's Duncan's 54 mile loop and backstage. Paredes Zapata also made it a clean sweep in the King of the Mountain race after claiming two of the three stages. Following their domination, Team Medellin easily took the team title, which was pleasing to head coach Julian Velasquez. Uh, we are very happy. Uh, first of all, we stay here in Jamaica. For us, it's first time racing Jamaica for our team. And I very love uh, with the country and with the people and very special uh, win the three stages and the overall classification here. No, normally uh, I'm very appreciate, I'm very uh, happy with the organization of the race, very friendly with us and this is the reason we come us, we come here uh, to Jamaica. Uh, this is I, I tell you before, it's, it's our first time here and I love it and we want to come back next year. Yes, so joining us to talk about the event's third staging, organizer Carlton Simmons of the Simmons High Velocity Cycling Club. Uh, Carlton, uh, welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We were uh, discussing with you ahead of the event, the preview of the event, and um, it's now over and the Colombian is on top. How was it? Um, I think we had a well-run, organized event over the three days and I'm happy that they were able to make it. Um, I think they represent what it is that um, we're looking for in terms of how they, the structure that they have as a team. So I think for the locals and the regional guys, I think they get to see firsthand how a team at that level operates during, during a race. Is, is Colombia a powerhouse in world cycling now? Because I remember some years ago that the top Barbadian, Barry Ford, I, I think he had a training base in Colombia at one point, which was many years ago before his retirement. And um, I'm just getting the feeling that Colombia are doing something right with cycling. I mean, Colombia is, is one of the top space in, in the Pan American region. I mean, a lot of those guys matriculate to Pro, pro teams that race in the Tour de France. I mean, Eagle Bernal, I mean, is, is one such person that um, is from that space and race in that space. So they produce a lot of top flight road riders that um, do well. I mean, even in the cycling space, track wise, they're doing excellent at the moment. Yeah, and of course, congratulations again to Paredes. But I'm going to ask about, of course, the Caribbean turnout and our Caribbean athletes. Were you surprised with the number of them that came out and were you happy with their performances? Um, these guys tend to want to come to Jamaica. Um, <laughs> from time to time, they tend to, what you say, pass through. So I think the event itself, we'll see a lot more of them coming next year as national teams versus trying to come to be a part of composite teams. Yeah. So the, the region itself, I think they want to be a part of it now that they have seen it and we have reached. So the, the response has been great. Yeah, and I want you to talk to us a bit about the importance of this Jamaica Cycling Classic 
if you want to get this sport recognized, you know, everywhere? I mean, it's very important. Um, the ratification that it has now speaks volume, not just for the rider itself, yeah. but for the teams who participate that are continental teams, that are federation teams, because what it does now, it brings credence to those teams and to those federations, because not only it gives points for the riders themselves, but it also gives points for the team okay. to maintain their ranking within the UCI. So it's, it's huge on all front for everyone. So I know it's a big deal for those competing. It's of course for those who are tuned in and watching the race. But what about the turnout and the spectators? Did you get the response that you wanted? Yes and no, because of the nature of it. So the, the dynamics of it next year is something that we'll have to look at to see how we can create like hot spots along the course to bring people out, okay. to create like a carnival yeah. in those spaces. Because when you look at when it goes through the town of Duncan's, that's a very exciting space because people came out. Okay, to watch and to see. To watch and see what's happening. And they're very excited in, 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 <laughs> in seeing it coming through the town. So we are now looking at, instead of doing two loops, doing three loops come next year. Mm. And that will extend the intensity in the racing and also the mileage for that stage. So those are some of the things that we will be looking into for next year's end. Yeah, greatest area of growth in the three years that we've seen the Jamaica Cycling Classic. It has, it has. I mean, it, it moved from two teams on the first year to four in the second year, now to six. And I mean, it would have been even more this year, but some of the teams had issues with visas. Um, some had financial issues, but again, because of the late start to it in terms of the invitations, they weren't able to, you know, come up with that type of funding to, to be here. So next year, it is looking better. And yeah. it'll be better. You're planning from now. <laughs> it has to start now. Yeah. There is no doubt that the Jamaica Cycling Classic has a buzz about it. Every year that it comes around, um, there is that level of anticipation. But how do you keep the momentum um, as you look to build the sport and, and build your local cadre of cyclists, um, build and improve? Um, it's, it's about having more events leading up to it, mm -hmm. where you get the guys coming out to be training really hard and to stay sharp because the event itself is, is hard. Yes. And the, the quality that will be coming to it is going to be of a high level. So it's, it's getting more racing locally before. Well, why, why are we not having that? Um, one of the big problems is sponsorship. Mm -hmm. um, getting corporate to come on board to, to see the vision and to want to be a part of it. So again, from our standpoint as a club, is how we sell the product to corporate, to get them to come on board and to see the vision. And can you do a better job in that regard? Yes, we can. I mean, there's always room to, to improve. Um, getting it to people, you know, going to people, presenting the, the, the product and letting them understand what the end result of it is all about. What is the end result of it all about? Because th th that's an important point you make. Um, it's, it's using the event to highlight the sport, highlight the country, getting youngsters involved into it because they're seeing it. Yeah. And getting parents to buy into the sport. Because unlike track and field, we just need a spikes and a shorts. I mean, cycling is a little bit more <laughs> on the expensive side. So it's, it's a buying and it's how you get parents and corporate to buy into it that will help you to, to, to move. Yeah, and, and as we wrap the event now, UCI endorsed International Cycling Union and um, how did the governing body feel about this last product? Um, the the, the um, conversation that we had with the chief commissaire after the event, he was pleased with what he saw. I mean, he was kind of surprised with the quick turnaround based upon when we got the ratification and then jumping to get the thing moving. So he had some things to say about how we need to 
maneuver around some of the things that we need to put in place. And um, he says, don't be too hard on ourselves with the criticisms, but just to use those criticisms to help to develop the, the product even better yeah. come next year. All right, Carlton Simmons, thanks for uh, linking with us here on the Sports Max Zone as we review what happened with the uh, International Jamaica Cycling Classic. Uh, growing every year and we expect for 2025 it will be the best we have seen up to that point. Uh, we'll be back with more on the Sportsman Zone after this. Stay with us.